January 2018, Las Vegas, CES. Huawei arrived with their flagship Mate 10 series, ready to officially announce their strategic partnership with AT&T. This could have been Huawei's biggest international business move. It seemed like a dream turned into a sudden nightmare. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the AT&T collaboration was gone, and plans with Verizon and Best Buy were canceled as well. The situation was so unexpected that even some Huawei employees in Vegas found out about it through newspapers. In the midst of this unexpected turn of events, Richard Yu, the CEO of Huawei's consumer business group, took the stage. He spoke without a script, delivering one of the best business speeches in the global telecom industry in just five minutes. He emphasized putting the consumer at the center, spoke of their journey starting from scratch. And highlighted the need for users to have better choices. On that day, at that moment, I happened to be there in person. This was in the era before the release of P30 Pro and the Reno 10X Zoom Edition. I captured these photos with my smartphone. For someone who has seen the ups and downs of the mobile industry for over a decade, it's still hard to fathom how the past five and a half years have flown by. How did we get here? Then a sudden appearance of the Mate 60 Pro bears an uncanny resemblance to a bygone era. There were almost no signs. Not even Huawei's retail store staff had a clue. Huawei's 5G phones have made a sudden comeback, and so has the Kirin chip. This could have been the most significant move in the mobile industry for the next three years, but Huawei cannot say a word. In these five plus years, Huawei's smartphones lost Google services. The latest flagship chips and 5G access. Yet, I've experienced every single Huawei flagship phone. What might be even more baffling to some is that I still have some of them. Today, I'd like to take you on a quick trip down memory lane, revisiting the Huawei phones that were released during this unique period in history, and commemorate a portion of my digital use that's now behind us. The first one is Mate 30 Pro Porsche design version. Or let's call it Mate 30 RS. It featured an 88-degree curved Samsung waterfall screen, no physical volume buttons, dual mode 5G, the Kirin 990 chip, a 3D depth sensing camera, and 27-watt wireless charging. This was Huawei's first flagship phone without Google services. But all of that didn't matter much. What really stood out was the genuine Porsche design with the leather back and vertical glass strips. It exuded business and luxury vibes. However, the glass back that also doubled as camera cover was prone to scratches. I read my vows holding this red Mate 30 RS at my wedding, so I'll probably keep this phone for a lifetime. The second one is the P40 Pro Plus, with an all-curved screen, a wide ceramic back, a five-camera setup, and a 10x periscope zoom. This phone had the best hand feel of any Huawei phone I've ever experienced. It was a bit heavy, but you could hold it all day without feeling tired. I still remember its retail price, eight thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight for the five twelve version. Why do I remember it? Because I ate salad for a month and lost ten pounds just to earn the right to buy it. The third one is the Mate 40 RS Porsche design. It still had a highly curved screen, the smoothest ninety hertz, and remarkably, it had been three years since Huawei's last five G Mate. The 3D ceramic back, octagonal camera module with five cameras, and the premium edition even had a temperature sensor. Okay, I admit, during the pandemic, I used it as a fork many times. And interestingly, when you look at the Mate 60 series, using it as a reference, going from Kirin 9000 to the Kirin 9000, it feels like dusting off and starting anew. The fourth one is the Mate X2, and because of its 5G capabilities. It had an exceptionally long shelf life. Its camera setup, even in today's context in 2023, might still be the best among foldable phones, mainly because it's one of the few that can afford to pack in so much hardware, maybe only matched by the 300 gram products. Two notable aspects of this phone are the anti-glare film on the inner screen and the stunning red vegan leather back. You've probably seen quite a few of these later on. The fifth one is the Mate 50 RS Porsche design, a much anticipated phone. The downside was the 4G connectivity, but the upside was the Snapdragon 8 Plus. There weren't any groundbreaking camera improvements on this phone, 
likely due to various factors, including the chip platform. The selling points were the nanotech glass and satellite communication. Personally, I don't find the 50RS as aesthetically appealing as the 40RS. Also, the camera setup on the 50RS is quite similar to what we see on the Mate 60 Pro, with the main camera and telephoto being identical and the ultra-wide angle not far behind. The sixth one is the P60 Art. I also had the local wide version, but if I had to choose one, I'd pick the P60 Art. I really like the design inspiration from the islands, and Huawei's marketing story probably played a role in this choice. This is a phone I think you have to use without a case. The P60 Art's camera capabilities are the result of Huawei's all-out effort, especially with its powerful 3.5x telephoto lens. Taking it on a trip and getting great shots is effortless. The last one is the Mate X3. I won't delve too much into it here as there will be a review video coming out soon. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, now is the perfect time to do it. In conclusion, the Mate X3 is a showcase of Huawei's hardware capabilities. And it marks the turning point where the foldable phone era meets the bar flagship era. So these are the Huawei phones I'm having in my hands. There's actually one regret and that's the Mate XS2. If I have the chance, I'd like to buy that unique Owl folding phone again. It's just too cool. I think in recent days, many tech content creators, like myself, have been feeling like they have a lot to say. It's been a long time since our tech community has been like this. No one knows who it is, but someone, after all that has happened, has pressed the Enter key, started a new paragraph, and begun writing a new story. Going back to Richard Yu's speech at CES in 2018, every one of us wants to see better products. And who can deny that? So that's all for this video. If you like it, be sure to subscribe. This is Tech33, and I'll see you in the next episode.